Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cromel School. Here is another video on how to give yourself a manicure. In this video I will do a correction on my left hand and someday on my right one. If you like this format, let me know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel and let's get into it. When I give myself a manicure, I place my hand the same way as I do with the client's hand, to make it easier for me. First, I need to remove the old coverage. To do this, I use a green carbide drill bit with a thin tip. Turn on the maximal speed, forward position, moving clockwise. Note that I always lean on with my pinky, even when I give myself a manicure. This allows the bit to slip quickly without going deep into the coating or cutting through the nails. I can see a lifting on my ring finger and I file underneath it with the tip of the bit. The previous time I was strengthening my natural nails with gel, but I can see peelings now. So today I'm going to strengthen them using a base cut. The peelings occurred because my nails curl badly and the material is too hard. The gel can't follow the natural nails and lifts up. Air pockets appear and pull the rest of the material. Then I place the bit parallel to the nail plate and make smoothing moves to remove all the bumps and roughness. My nails are not so easy to process, they are very thin, like a parchment paper. They grow upwards and have a trapezoidal shape and are very sensitive to polymerization, so all the possible problems at once. My nails crack at the gross points. However, there are fewer cracks when the natural nails grow out. That's why I don't file my nails from the inside, in order to have a base for the future material to be applied on. When I need to process the right side of my nail, I turn the finger to the side, so again I work the same way as I do on my clients. To prevent any accidental contact between the bit and the nail tip, I'm moving toward the free edge. If I move as usual, the bit may hit the tip of the nail and it may scare me or in the worst case, I will cut down the tip of my nail. When I remove the coating in this position, it's really inconvenient because I cover the fan with my palm and dust is flying all around and interferes with the manicure process. I brush it off thoroughly to clean it up. I cut the length in the forward position. I put the bit under my nail and this way I can get an oval shape, not a square one. There is a crack on the side of my thumb and I'll have to fix it. That's what the nails look like after the removal. I left a thin layer of the material on the free edge. I got lucky with my cuticle, since it's thin, but there is a lot of pterygium on the nail plate. I open up the cuticle with an orange stick and prepare it for the e-filing. Since the cuticle is thin and dry, I'm going to do the e-file manicure. I remove the pterygium and lift up the cuticle rim. I'm using the red diamond flame drill bit 0.23 in diameter. First, I process the left side of the cuticle on all five nails. The speed is 10 to 17,000 RPM and it's also very important to lean on with the pinky finger, so that there are no cuts. Then I change the rotation direction to reverse and process all the right side of the cuticle. I pull back the cuticle well with my thumb trying to open up the sinuses to see everything well. Don't forget to polish the sidewalls.
I clean the sinuses and polish the sidewalls with smoothing moves. Here's what I have after lifting up the cuticle. Then I need to shape my nails. I should do it before cutting the cuticle with an e-file. I'm using a wooden 240-180 grit file. Making long moves, I want to file an almond shape. First, I file from the top and then I put the file under the nail plate. Filing the lower parallels, make sure they are even and sharp. Smooth out the transition from the artificial material to the natural nail. File the surface and clean up all the liftings. I can see a lifting on my ring finger. Of course, I can't leave it like that, so I remove it and smooth out this area with the file. I like to buff near the cuticle and underneath it. A buffer cleans up all the skin leftovers and to ridge them. The surface gets smooth and the gel won't flow into the cuticle. The point is to mat the surface and not to smoothen it. So if your nail buffer is too old or erased or it has got a fine abrasiveness, the nail surface will get too glossy and it may cause gel polish liftings near the cuticle. I'm using a rounded cylinder drill bit to polish my cuticle and sidewalls. I lift up the cuticle even more with the tip of the bit and polish it with its surface. The speed is 7 to 10 thousand RPM, forward position. I've got a red drill bit, but it looks like a black one, because it has darkened in the hot air sterilizer. When I polish the cuticle on the left side, I turn the nails toward me, it's way more comfortable this way. And when I polish the right side of the cuticle, I place the finger on the side. We're done with the skin polishing. Now I'm cleaning up the clogged skin and the sinuses. I grab the skin very carefully with nippers, because the skin in the sinuses is extremely thin and sensitive. To be honest, it's not an easy task to give yourself a manicure, because you need to find a comfortable hand position. And it's hard to pull the skin, so the manicure takes a lot of time. Sometimes I do one hand on one day and another hand on the other day. I haven't got enough patience and free time for it. I finished the manicure, shaved the nails, washed my hands, cleaned out the dust and degreased the nail plate. Since my nails are thin and problematic, I'm applying a dehydrator to dry the nail plate and an acid-free primer that will provide the bonding with the artificial coating. I apply a small amount, only on the natural nail plate. After removing the material and all the work, I can see that the arch on my ring finger has opened, so I will use a hard material and clip the free edge to make the nail more arched and not that wide. I still have the previous hard material on the free edge, 
So this time I'm going to strengthen my nails with a camouflage base cut. And first, I apply a thin layer of a transparent base for a better bonding. Cure in the lamp. I can feel burning even with such a thin layer of the base cut, so I take my hand out of the lamp and when the burning stops, I put the hand back in the lamp to cure. I need to repair the cracks. And I really like using a jelly gel for it. It has got a nice texture, it doesn't flow too much, and requires minimal application time, unlike Acrogel. You don't need to suck the brush in the liquid, just barely touch the nail and patch up all the cracks. After curing, I need to file all the bumps that I've made. I'm using the hard gel to strengthen my ring finger's free edge. However, this hard gel has a more liquid consistency, and I'm going to clip the nail when it's cured. I apply the gel on the crack from the inside, so that it's covered with the material on both sides. Cure in the lamp, and then clip the nail to shape up the free edge. Make sure to place the clip on the tip of the nail. Don't put the clip on the natural nail plate, to avoid onycholysis on the sides. The nail is more arched now. Look, it's not as open as it used to be at the beginning. I'm filing mostly the sides, to narrow down the shape. I turn my hand away to check the symmetry. That's how it looks at the tip. And now it's narrower from the top view. Remove the dust and proceed with the alignment. I'm using a camouflage milky base in soft pink. Apply a thin layer in the center, on the right and on the left sides. I grab a big drop of the material, because my nails are growing upward, so I need to apply more material near the cuticle. I lay it out on the nail plate and align it with the brush. If needed, you can align the surface with a thin brush. I like to use it when I turn the finger over to spread the material. If you couldn't build up the architecture at once, and if you don't have enough material on the nail, then you can align it once again. First, I apply a thin layer of the base cut, and then I put a drop and spread it. The highest point, the apex, should be in the central part of the nail plate. With this second aligning layer, I don't apply too much material on the sides, since I don't want them to look too wide, most of it should form the height. I cure my thumb separately. I have aligned the nail plate and built up the proper architecture. Now my nails don't seem as lifted as they were before. And I can move on to the design. I'm going to do a smooth gradient, an ombre, and I need a milky background for that. I could have aligned the nail plate with the milky base cut, but I didn't have one, so I apply the milky shade now. I've chosen two shades for the gradient, neon peachy and neon pink. I apply a small amount of color near the cuticle and
and spread it. Then I take a special ombre brush with split hairs. I put it flat on my nail and start slowly pulling the material down. I'm making small moves toward myself so that the color can blend into the tacky layer of the milky base cut. And using this simple technique, I'm getting a gradient. Once I've created an ombre, I paint the cuticle area with a thin brush. If I had applied the material close to the cuticle from the beginning, there might have been floods. I want to apply the second layer for more color density. If the gel polish is opaque, you don't have to apply it once again. The second layer is applied the same way as the first one, but only in the central part of the nail. Therefore, I can get more density near the cuticle. I'm going to cover up the nails with a matte top. I think it will create a more interesting look. Remove the tacky layer when the top coat has cured. I also want to add a small design using some white gel paste. There will be geometric patterns. I'm stretching this gel to make it thin. And using a brush, I paint dots marking the line. You can also create this pattern using an orange stick or a dotting tool. This design doesn't require any drawing skills. The gel paste does it all by itself. The matte top is not as smooth as the glossy one, so it's harder to spread the gel paste. Make sure that the paste you are using does not crack while wearing. I also add some glossy gel polish dots over my white dots. Here's the result. Unfortunately, the camera does not capture all the color density. Neon shades always look a little muted, but in the daylight, they look very vibrant and at the same time muted. I really like this effect, especially with the matte top coat. Write in the comments if you give yourself a manicure or get your nails done. Give a thumbs up, success in your work, bye bye!